So thank you, Dr. Eaton, uh, for organizing this battle uh, against Dupuytren's disease. It's an important step in the war against it. And um, thank you for the opportunity to be here because uh, I've been obsessed by the disease and the treatment and the fight against it. And finally meeting uh, lots of you, uh, I'm, I'm you're my idols. I mean, uh, I'm going to have sig signatures at the, at the end, if possible. So I would like to present uh, some of my work um, on uh, uh, treating the disease. Uh, I have no conflicts of interest to declare since I'm a basic scientific uh, simple hand surgeon. This side? Must be. We all have the same uh, genetic uh, problem. We're all interested in Dupuytren's disease and we do not know how this works. It worked? Oh, great. So the treatment goal in Dupuytren's disease is to regain and maintain a normal range of motion of the fingers. There is no cure for the disease and if a patient has no sy symptoms, I usually say it's in a remission state. The goal of treatment is to correct contractures in the fingers and to maintain those corrections as long as possible. Bulstrode mentioned, and this is pretty wise, I think that disease recurrence is, an, is ine inevitable uh, consequences after surgery as long as the patient lives long enough. So it's the other side. You got it. There are a lot of treatment methods and that's because we're not sure of any one of them. And um, at this point I think the only really reliable one or more reliable one is surgery. And we have this uh, big treatment letter with all of the options. And on one side of the letter we have the minimal invasive techniques and the other side we have the maximal invasive techniques and even uh, the resection. Uh, the minimal invasive techniques are more concentrated on regaining range of motion and with as little as uh, possible bothering the patient and on the other side uh, we just want to cut all of the disease and hopefully it won't come back. So which surgical procedure should we choose or prefer? There are few studies, there are lots of studies in Dupuytren's disease of course, but they most of the time study one technique and have a reasonably good outcome. But there are no randomized, no real randomized controlled trials comparing techniques in an uh, objective way. So I really think we need to investigate. And when we uh, study techniques, we, of course we look at outcome, but they're all reasonably good. Uh, when we look at the corrections are good, the patients are satisfied, uh, the disability, we looked at that, it's not even me measurable by the DASH score in Dupuytren's disease. And complications are low in most of the time and healing times aren't even uh, compared. But the real debate in Dupuytren's disease, I believe, is will it recur? Um, and will it recur fast or not? And this may depend on the technique. But when we look at recurrence reports, it all, it's all a matter of follow-up. It's the timing. If you look at recurrence, it's what Bolstrode mentioned. If you look at recurrence after two years, it's totally different when we look at recurrence after the 10 years. And all these studies are really different. And it also depends on what, what, what is recurrence? How is it defined? Is it recurrence, and extension? Is it just nodules? Is it really contracture? These are some of the definitions, uh, which makes it uh, pretty obvious there is no consensus. What's important is when, when you can't uh, stretch out the fingers anymore, when you have a positive Houston table top test, I, I'm sure you can uh, speak of uh, contracture and after surgery it's a recurrence. A recurrence is really a recurrence of contracture, not of disease, because the disease was never gone. It says this, the patient is, has a problem, is this out of point? Oh, I'm sorry, what did I do? Okay. The patient ha has a problem, he's not happy, he presents. After surgery he should be happy. But how long will it take? If his fingers are bent again, he won't be happy. It's as simple as that. A contracture reflects the hand function. It reflects the disability the patient is experiencing with his uh, problem, and he's, it is exactly how he will judge the outcome of your surgery. Oh, this is so difficult for my brains. So, when we, when we look at surgical outcome, the most uh, big questions that surgeons really have is, is there a be better 
procedure if we look over the currents. Is it true that if we do a segmental fasciectomy, if we don't take out all of the tissue and we just concentrate on regaining the range of motion, is that prone to recurrence? On the other hand, if we take it, uh, all of the tissue out, including uh, the skin, are we sure it will never re recur? In other words, do we need to fight the disease, like we do in full thickness grafting, or can we fight the contracture and use minimal invasive surgery? So what I did is we looked at the files at uh, our office and we looked at the patient's perception of recurrence. And we compared that with the surgical technique that was used, uh, all in first time surgery with at least two uh, years of follow up. And we just simply asked, did the contracture, in your opinion, re recur after the operation? Uh, some patients were lost, of course. There were uh, patients that even died, uh, which is normal. And, um, we had a, a follow-up of about five years, uh, which was two years until uh, nine, and we had a normal uh, distribution of A to 1 male to female, which is uh, the distribution of Dupuytren's disease, and they had surgery at 58 and over 64 at follow-up. This was what we saw. 57% uh, of the patients reported just uh, that it recurred. And this was the distribution of the surgical techniques where we saw the MM is Moorman's technique, I use that name because it sophisticated uh, the villain incision, incisions of um, segmental fasciectomy. That was performed in 40%, the Z plus T in 32, the Brunner incisions in 14% and the full thickness grafting in 14%. And these were the results of what the patient mentioned. It was a little bit surprising because there was no higher reported recurrence in minimal invasive techniques and on the other hand there was no lower reported recurrence in the maximal invasive <coughs> techniques and this was statistically significant. We even saw a lower recurrence in minimal invasive uh, techniques as we see in the movements technique where you see a, 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 a high uh, satisfaction, well not recurrence anyhow. When we uh, grouped them and we said, okay, we'll, we'll see at the total strand resection, you take all the, out all of the diseased tissue and we compare it with the minimal invasive, you even saw that, the, that it was the other way around. You had more uh, recurrences reported in the total strand resections, and this was statistically significant. We all know that minimal invasive surgery has advantages. It is less extensive, there were no wide dissection, wound complications are very low, there is no stiffness. And we noticed that the follow-up values were even slightly better than the maximal invasive techniques. I was, of course, every, every surgeon and every researcher tried to find an answer to what his findings are. And this was one of my ideas, that Dupuytren's disease is a fibroproliferative disease as is scar tissue, and the more uh, maximal invasive surgical technique you use, it may even make more scar tissue, uh, stimulating the myofibroblasts, and may even induce uh, re recurrence of the disease. And we looked at full thickness graft, this was an, another study. We saw that in primary disease, you, primary surgery, you had about 50-50 results. And when you had a recurrent disease, you did a segmental fasciectomy, and patient had a recurrence, he said, okay, this time I'll do it right, I'll take everything out, I'll take the skin out. So it's secondary revision surgery. We saw that everyone mentioned uh, the disease recurred. Could be an extension, I don't know, but there was no guarantee. This study, I know, has a lot of weaknesses. Um, it's retrospective, uh, it's the patient's perspective, but I think this matters. Um, you can't say as a surgeon, the operation was successful, and the patient says, what the heck? <laughs> So there are no data on the contracture, how big was the contracture, what was the indication for the surgical technique. And this is uh, important, of course, because it's retrospective. So maybe the surgeon was more intelligent than he thought, and he said, this is a bad patient. Um, his family, his father had Dupuytrens, he had an amputation on the other side, so I'll use a full thickness graft. So that means that those patients were selected, uh, maybe not even thinking of it, and they were bad patients, and that's why they had more recurrence. So there could be an indication bias. So I looked at the risk score, as was uh, uh, made easy by Abe, and I looked at the recurrence and, and at the technique of the surgery. And there was an, a clear uh, uh, correlation between the technique used and the risk score. That means there was a bias, there was a serious bias. The surgeon was more intelligent than he thought. 
uh, he chose bigger surgery in dangerous patients. So I had to take out all the high-risk patients to look at the results again. That's exactly what I did. And you see that the results are similar. Again, the, the segmental fasciectomy has no higher recurrence and the uh, opposite for uh, bigger surgery does not guarantee uh, a definite uh, result. But due to the drop of the numbers, the, the statistical correlation was lost to my big frustration, of course. <coughs> Nevertheless, I think that what we saw here, that there was no higher recurrence report in segmental fasciectomy. And on the other hand, maximal surgery does not guarantee remission. I'm convinced of that. And I think that we should at least consider minimal invasive surgery if it's feasible because we have less scar tissue and most of all we have a fast rehabilitation. The revisions, uh, if it occurs, revision <laughs> surgery will be easier because you have less scar tissue and there is no real argument for higher recurrence. I think the surgeon should bear in mind it's a disease and the surgeon can cut out the strands or he can cut the strands but he can't cut out the disease itself. So let's keep the fingers moving. Thank you.